Hey guys, Raj Sanger of Car Security. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of Raj's Garage. Today, we'll be talking about my 993 Turbo. Okay, my 993 Turbo purchased in January 2018. Now, where are we? Well, you can see there are a few Porsches in the background. We're at Northway Porsche in Reading. These are the guys that I used to do a PPI, a pre-purchase inspection on the 993 Turbo. So before I bought the car, before I'd done the deal, the car was delivered here. And Ray and Paul went over the car, gave me a five or six page report and documented a few issues that they found with the car that needed addressing, some needed addressing straight away, some could be done sort of medium to long term and also notified me of uh, stone chips, uh, any paint discoloration and so on. So without that PPI, I wouldn't have bought this car. So you know what I thought, because we're firming the 993 Turbo, let's bring it back to, okay, it's not where I bought it from, but where I did the deal. The car was uh, purchased from an independent uh, dealer in Wilshire called the Manor Garage. Great service, thank you very much. Uh, looking for probably best part of a year, saw four or five cars. This particular one popped up, uh, competitively priced to what I'd seen previously and what was there in the marketplace, but it needed a bit of TLC. So TLC, what did it need? Well, it needed paint. The whole car needed paint, but it wasn't severe. I could use the car. There was a little bit of blistering around the front windscreen. The bonnet had pretty bad stone chips, same as the uh, lower bumper section and both wings. So it was a usable car, but not to my standard. I actually par exchanged my Audi RS2 as part of the deal. Beautiful car, the RS2, we'll throw some pictures up. Had that car for two, three years, wasn't using it sat on my driveway um, they gave me a competitive price now should really in hindsight should really have kept the rs2 because those prices have shot up but ultimately i used that car and obviously some more money to jump into this 993 turbo so it is what it is you know you, you lose on one hand but you win on the other hand as part of the deal with the seller new clutch was fitted car was serviced the ac was regassed and then Northway Porsche also uh, addressed some of the issues that they'd found in the PPI, namely the engine cam chain housings, they were leaking oil, uh, the boost pipes, some boost pipes needed changing, I think there was a slave cylinder that needed changing. So that was all done, the car was given fresh bill of health, and I enjoyed the car, I really did drive this car and enjoy the car before I went into the paint process. I'll throw some pictures up of what the car looked like previously. It wasn't too bad, but it wasn't to my standard. Paint, there's only one guy I use, and that's Greg Howell of Southern Bodies. Already painted my 964 C2 previously, so it was a no-brainer. Go back to Greg. Wanted to stay with the original color, the black, but um, I needed a bit of a refresh. So what we did do, now that we're at the front of the car, what we, the first thing we did was add this Turbo S lower lip. So that lower section is from a, a Turbo S. Brand new, purchased that off Porsche Reading. A few other bits and pieces were purchased as well. So you got like uh, gaskets and rubber seals, all the gaskets around the lights, the bonnet, the sunroof gasket around the mirrors, uh, around the glass. Two fresh, complete fresh lights purchased again from Porsche Reading. The previous ones were a little bit discolored. In fact, the previous ones I managed to get really good money for them on eBay, so it's a no-brainer to replace them with new lights. Going on the side of the car, um, there was no other rust, so all panels are, from what I know, the original body panels. So wings and so on, all original body panels. I did change the stone guard, um, so that was removed, uh, new stone guard. Again, new rubbers and seals and gaskets around the, the rear bumper and around the rear lights. It was actually a fairly straightforward uh, repaint. It was repainted in November 2018. 
and I had the car back in time for Christmas. So it was, literally was in and out with Greg. Fantastic job as always. We'll throw up some pictures of the paint progress. You know, at the gun, this car just looked fantastic. Now, what we're talking three years on, still looks absolutely brilliant. It's quite obvious that it wouldn't have come with these wheels and it didn't. And it didn't come with this suspension setup because it's sitting substantially lower than stock. So it came with the original 18 inch Porsche 993 turbo twist wheels. I've still got those and obviously came with stock suspension. Let's talk wheels first. So we've switched it up to these 18 inch Rotiform KLUs. KLU is the actual part code model number. On the rear you have 18 by 11 and on the front you have 18 by eight and a half. Tires, we've got Michelin's, we've got 225 40 uh, 18 on the front and 285 30 18 on the back yes they are super wide on the back um, suspension wise stock suspension was removed i've still got that that's parked uh, we've gone for kw variant 3 which i think is absolutely fantastic i can go much lower but i think that the stance and the setup that i've gone for is a usable daily setup you've got adjustable compression and reband damping on the kw variant 3 suspension whilst i'm standing at the back of the car it's very difficult to miss these wide arches and for me that's one of the things i love about the 993 turbo the fact that it's sort of narrow body and then suddenly you have these wide hips and you can see these wide hips when you're driving in your side mirrors and plus the whale tail. This just looks crazy. I don't know if it'll pass any uh, legislation nowadays, you know. I'm not sure if you can have a wing that big bolted onto the back of a new car, but on these cars, it looks fantastic. Um, now, why the whale tail? Well, actually, the whale tail hides the massive intercooler that's required for the 993 turbo. So, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop the boot lid, show you the 993. Uh, intercooler you won't see much of the engine because the intercooler covers everything and then we'll talk about something else which is at the rear of the car so as you can see there's not much to see apart from this massive intercooler but whilst we are here let's talk about the exhaust now one of the biggest gripes I had with the 993 Turbo when I purchased it was the noise. The noise level wasn't on the same par as the rest of the car. Very quiet, very a very muted sound. So I started looking at exhaust options, spoke to two or three guys in the US, a couple of companies in Germany and Europe, and in the end I went with someone local, UK based and hand built exhaust. Now we have here a Brook Engineering exhaust system. Okay, so this is a Inconel 625 crossover exhaust. You'll see in the pictures what I mean by crossover exhaust, only the rear setup. So you've got a turbo back system and it contains two sports high flow catalytic converters. Inconel can cope with twice the temperature compared to normal steel and therefore can be 50% thinner. The material resonates more, creating a higher and totally different pitch tone. And you'll hear that when we go for a drive. In fact, Inconel exhausts are also used in Formula One and in hyper cars. Let's uh, get inside the cabin, show you what the cabin's like. Compact, that's what I can say. Firstly, the seats. These are the hardback sports seats. So when I was looking for a 993 Turbo, the two options in seats were hardback or with ruffled leather. I don't like that ruffled leather look, personal opinion. I wanted something with hardbacks. Um, gray or black, you know. Some guys prefer black on black. For me, it wasn't an issue. I quite like the gray contrast with the darker exterior. Uh, first thing you see, is the steering wheel. I do not like the 993 turbo steering wheel. We'll throw up a picture. Just don't like the way that looks. Um, Momo, thank you very much for this 
carbon prototipo. Um, carbon, you might say, why have I gone with carbon? There's no carbon inside the rest of the car. Well, I am looking for the Turbo S carbon option. So on the Turbo 993 Turbo S's, they come with a carbon option. So the, the door cards, they have carbon here, and the center console has carbon. If anyone knows of someone who is selling that carbon option for the Turbo S's, please let me know, because uh, I can't find any in the UK. Might find some somewhere else. Um, so audio now, obviously one of the big things is that I changed the audio more or less straight away. In this, I didn't. We've put one of the latest Kenwood Singleton stereos in there. It's got uh, DAB, it's got Bluetooth, USB, uh, music streaming and so on. I've actually still kept the stock speakers. I will change them at some point and we'll document that for the channel. These come with a Nokia amplifier in the door. We'll show you that weird setup, but yeah, there's a little Nokia amplifier in this door. Um, so interior wise, all I've really done is a steering wheel and the stereo. Security, had to upgrade the security, that's a must. It didn't actually come with an alarm, so I've got a Clifford Concept 650 on here, which does the central locking, also locks the windows, and I've got a Smart Track Category 6 tracking system. Very important on these cars, you know, taking into account the value of these vehicles. Guys, I think that's enough of me talking away. Hopefully, I'm not boring the deaf out of you. Let's uh, let's jump in, go for a drive, uh, give you an idea of what this car handles like, the performance, and hopefully you'll be able to hear that Brook Engineering exhaust doing its job. So let's go. What's it like to be inside the 993 Turbo? Well, it's very much that 80s, 90s Porsche cabin interior. Um, very small cabin, just lean over without even having to stretch. I'm touching the, the other side door card. You've got the five dials on the instrument cluster, a left-hand side fuel, uh, oil level, oil temperature, oil pressure. In the middle, you have that big rev counter, which is typical of Porsches even now. Uh, the 911 still has the rev counter in the middle. You've got then the speedo and on the right hand side you've got the clock. Simple Porsche cabin design. Everything has a function. Uh, very much an old school analog look to everything. You've got a pull-up switch for the rear heater. You've got climate, very basic climate and AC control which does work. This car does blow lovely cold air in the summer months very much in keeping of that 80s, 90s Porsche ergonomic design. Small pillars, as you can see here, and a very small window gap. Really compact, tight cabin. The sports seats, the hardback seats, very, very, very comfortable. Um, lovely driving position. Steering wheel, fantastic. Now that I've changed it to this Momo Prototipo. Um, you do still sit off center as with all Porsches from this era. So I'm sitting slightly towards the left that way. And that's because the oil cooler is located in the right-hand drive uh, wing at the front. Six-speed gearbox. And I've got to say, what a lovely, lovely gearbox this is. Very, very smooth. The gears go in very, very, very easily. Clutch-wise, very soft pedal feel. Uh, really smooth gear changes, six-speed gearbox. The clutch is hydraulically assisted in the 993s. I've also got KW Variant 3 suspension on this car. Um, slightly softer setting. I feel with the, the 993 Turbo, it's, uh, it's a pretty looking car compared to the 964 Turbo, which just looks angry. Um, that wider stance on the back, the 993, just a prettier looking car. So I didn't want it low, so low and slammed on the floor. So I've got a slightly, sitting slightly higher and a softer suspension setting, which works really well. Um, feedback from the steering wheel is extremely positive. 
Uh, you could throw it into corners and this car is so planted. That is also because of the four wheel drive system, which was derived from the Porsche 959 supercar of that, of that same era. All 993 turbos are four wheel drive. Everything prior to that is rear wheel drive. All the turbo models from the 993 turbo onwards are four wheel drive. But what's the power delivery like? There is some turbo lag. This 993 turbo has two turbos. So below 3000 revs, yes, there is some lag and you know, you can, you can hoon around and it just feels like a, a heavy Porsche with okay, modest power. But it's only when you put your foot down and those turbos kick in. Power and performance wise, well, the 993 turbo, four wheel drive, 408 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in about 4.2 seconds, which for 1995 is pretty good going. Cars nowadays, 400 brake horsepower could be the norm. Um, when the 993 turbo came out, it was pitted against the Ferrari 355. The 355 had slightly less power, 375 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in about 4.7 seconds. So although arguably the 355 is a better looking car and sounds so much better, performance wise, the 355 couldn't keep on par. The 993 Turbo destroys the 355 in every aspect, as you can see. That Inconel exhaust, Eddie Brooke exhaust, totally transformed this car. It just sounds so different and boy does it go, in fact it puts a smile on your face. So going back to performance, faster than the 355, doesn't sound as good as the 355, better handling than the 355. 355 is a little bit twitchy. Um, I've got a 355, if you've not seen the episode with my 355, we'll throw a link up at the end of this uh, video and you can watch that. Also, Diablo, the Lamborghini Diablo, similar era car, a um, lot more power on the Diablo. You're looking about 475 brake horsepower, but 0 to 60, 4.5 seconds. Yes, arguably a heavier car and looks better, sounds better. The 993 Turbo still outperforms it in 0 to 60, handling. Um, obviously, there's a lot more drama when you're driving a 355 or a Lamborghini. This car matched that, but in terms of performance, knocks it out of the park. Handling wise, Wow. Crazy. And brakes, absolutely brilliant. As you'd expect with a car pushing out 400 odd brake horsepower. That power is phenomenal. Actually makes you think that when this car came out in 1995, it would have been groundbreaking. There was nothing out there that could deliver power like this. And consistently, consistently, you know, that's the thing with this car. You can get in, you can drive the nuts out of it. Consistently, I keep using that word, but it literally is. Get in, foot down, off you go. Maintenance costs. Some guys have asked me, you know, can you, can you give an idea of maintenance costs? Well, this car has been fairly cheap to maintain. Okay, I've not done many miles. I do five, 600 miles a year in this car. Uh, bar the initial costs, which I did factor in, uh, I mentioned earlier about 5K I spent on new clutch and bits and pieces. I've only had to do one service and today it's booked in for a, another service at Northway, which is the major service. Um, it's needed a battery, brakes are fine. Um, so you're probably looking over a four year spread. I've spent 2000 pounds, which is really nothing. Obviously if I've driven it a little bit more, maybe the cost will be that much more as well. Uh, but I wouldn't say they're gonna be a lot more. When you compare the running costs of my 993 Turbo against my 355, in the same four year period, I've spent maybe seven or eight thousand pounds on my 355, two cam belt services, and each cam belt service is the best part of two grand, 
there's always bits and pieces, perishables and so on on the 355, which cost that much more. Right, what are the plans for this car? None whatsoever. I absolutely love this car, it is a keeper. Unless something better comes along, when I mean better, it has to be something like a 993 Turbo S, which are now changing hands for best part of 300,000 pounds. It's a lot of money. Or maybe a single Porsche. I think this car is potentially a forever car. I'll maybe change the wheels next year and it could do with an audio upgrade, which I will definitely do. But until then, I'm just gonna continue to enjoy it. Guys, hope you enjoyed that. I thoroughly did. I, I love this car. It's possibly one of those keepers. I do get a few guys messaging me, asking me if it's for sale. At this moment in time, it's not for sale. You know, I, I say it's a keeper, it's not for sale. I'm not sure. But what I will tell you is I will continue to enjoy this car. Every time I get in it, turn it, fire it up, massive smile on my face, big grin. Now, um, thanks for watching as always. Uh, like, that's very, very, very important. Hit the like button now if you can. Any questions you have, any comments, uh, please drop them below and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, subscribe to the channel, share this video amongst all your friends and so on. Now the next video will be another Porsche. Keeping with the turbo theme will be about my 964 Turbo. That's the car that went through a full-on restoration. There are about four videos already on our channel covering the restoration process, but I've actually never spoken about the car. So we'll throw up some links to the restoration process of the 964 Turbo. I don't know if you can see, but the Turbo is over there, waiting patiently for me to jump in and take it for a bit of boost. So uh, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.